interesting expose regarding him and his um, working culture that he has going on there over at his studio that I thought was really interesting to read and to kind of go through with you guys on here. So this is the article here, courtesy of Curb. It says, Tom Sachs promised a fun cult. The sculptor likes to call his studio part of his art practice. Working there could often be scary. Oh, 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 oh. The inventor of 10 bullets might actually put a bullet through you if you don't shave <laughs> or smoothen or temper. Was it tamper? No, what's it called when you do that thing? Is it temper? I forgot. Or tape the edges of something correctly. So let's see what they say here in this article. Um, in February, anonymous artwork family posted a listing for an exclusive, sorry, executive personal assistant on New York Foundation at Arts website. The listing saw someone who would make life easier for the couple in every way possible. This meant picking up clothes for the high end stores, managing all medical need requests, and helping rooftop garden maintenance and in studio cats, and learning complicated sounding um, closet and dog systems. It went viral, and the New York Times covered it in a paper summation. The ad combined a tone so blithe with detailed lists of tasks it was so unreasonable i didn't find that post unreasonable it was a weird listing that went viral i just thought in general it just sounded like what an assistant actually does but i think when you put when you write down what an assistant's obligations are task and what they're required to do it can sound a bit nuts it kind of can sound bordering on the side of slavery but it is a pretty prestigious job. You do get to be in some interesting spaces. You meet some interesting people. Um, sometimes you can make a lot of money. So I didn't really have that much of an issue with the listing personally. But it was a bit of a bummer when I found out it was, or when it was leaked that it was Tom Sachs. Anyway, Tom Sachs 56 has long been represented by Seprin and West Westwater. I hate when they do this in these cool articles. It's sort of like they're trying to get him, what, dropped from his representation or something. Why Why? why mention that? It doesn't matter. The Sutton Gallery <clears throat> is also home to Julian Snowball and Bruce Newman are obviously two legends in the art world. He's best known for installations made of consumer products. Um, in recent years, much of his works has been related to space travel, like a life-size replica of the Apollo 11 lunar model made of stolen plywood. His sculptures tend to show the way that we've been assembled and duct tape and screws and handwritten notes. These days, his pieces go for more than $300. Um, at his opening in Aquavilla in October, the line to get around, to land to get in wrapped around the 79th Street. <clears throat> For his most recent release of the Nike Craft General Purpose shoe, the company took a car the New York Times, and there have been other houses of sm small furniture line and NFTs. NFTs, obviously, you can go away. The big bit. But he also come famous with a unique way of which he has for three decades run his Chinatown studio with an extension of his art practice, complete with the fastidiously detailed systems. In 2010, he released a film called Ten Bullets, which I think is awesome. I think anybody that's into design um, or that's, yeah, that's into design in any way, shape or form and wants to, you know, have a little bit of refresher on what a kind of a good practice looks like and a really effective way to kind of look at how you approach your work, regardless of what field or medium you work in. I think you could take a good a lot of notes and inspiration from 10 bullets I think it's really really well done in my opinion which was represented in both employee handbook and artwork filmmaker Van Neistat who's Katie Neistat's brother is one of the former studio members in the film Sachs describes the rules that govern his studio everyone must place all the items parallel or a 90 degree angle they walk quietly as if in a monastery employees have to maintain a healthy diet and exercise regime avoid personal inventiveness and respond to commands with the words I understand or I don't understand there's even a system for when the system isn't followed. Employees have to sacrifice money to the lever face, a piggy bank based on the villain and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Personally, all this stuff I thought was all done tongue in cheek. But this article is basically saying it was real. It was real rap. I always thought it was tongue in cheek, kind of take the piss a little bit, being very serious and also kind of being jokey, kind of taking the piss out of itself. But hey, the space... Um, the space where this all plays out feels charming. A little West Anderson employees uh, wear matching utility coats and the plywood shelves are lined with such as pinched ceramics and everyone is conspicuously attractive. Um, if this sounds like a cult, well, that's what that was kind of the point. Employees have been known to work out of the program called Space Camp three times a week at 7 a.m., wearing uniforms printed with their first initial, last name, and serial numbers. Such as, um, Sachs assigned them. We'd go out jogging in Soho, and people would take pictures of us. It's not like they knew Tom was. They just thought they were re they were <laughs> a regular cult, <laughs> says a former studio assistant. Some of them got their serial numbers tattooed on their bodies. Okay, that's a bit weird. It's a bit crystal -ish. Plus, Sachs called it a cult, constantly. Constantly. This place is a cult, and I mean that in the scariest, most Manson family way, he said in a GQ interview. 
he talked about his temper too in the paradox of bullets a follow-up video of 10 bullets he illustrates another motto the virtues of a freak out by throwing a typewriter through a wall it flies into a room a woman's calmly eating noodles it hits her but it could be actual cult right or else it would tumble say it sasha said that studio culture is created his greatest work of art but based on interviews with more than a dozen former employees many of whom um, knew that they were signing up for a neutral work environment the experience of the studio could be characterized by destabilizing and scary yo that's the peak of um modern living in it living in a western world where you think working in a flipping art studio where you can quit at any time is scary these destabilizing working for somebody that has standards somebody that kind of is a bit of a tyrant somebody that demands the best at all times can be scary and destabilizing like god almighty we're so so weak um sash declined to be interviewed for the story of course he did um and in a statement to the new york times a spokesperson describes the place as a rigorous and exacting artist studio exactly which it should be i think i all i remember reading or find or, or learning that eminem when he records in a studio he treats it like a job he essentially goes there from nine to five doesn't arrive any later doesn't stay any later and kind of bangs out what he needs to do in those hours and then goes home and then comes back the next day but you can imagine inside the studio itself there's probably other things that he probably does he doesn't let anybody in there that's not recording no smoking no eating or whatever it's just it's a place of work because that's what he does he creates music sells it and stuff and tours the world and that allowed him to do other things so essentially that is his work he has to take it seriously um and you'd imagine as well when you're designing personally for me if you're writing or designing stuff you know even your table even your work surface needs to be somewhat clear so that your mind can be clear so you can start work again like you know there's all these things that come into place um in order to kind of make sure that you are able to put your best work out there or to try to create your best work it says um um, rigorous and exacting art standards art studio sorry um, that has fostered high standards and a fast paced works environment to support the robust output not everyone they conclude they concede sorry is a fit for the culture but Tom Sachs Studio believes all employees should feel safe and secure in their workplace and is committed to upholding these values here's one of Sachs former studio managers describing working for him He's, the, the person says it's almost as if he goes out of his way to sow discomfort and pause it off as if he's a genius it's like a ruse so many people out here know that he's cruel but the art world is tiny and no one gives a shit all people are just scared and he's very influential um people don't want to get on the bad side of him because they want to you know get favors and whatnot and be in his good graces so that makes a lot more sense um you see a lot in you know in fashion as well you see a lot in nightlife there's a lot of cunts a lot of proper all caps cunts but people don't want to say anything about it because they don't want to you know get rid of their guest list spot they don't want to get rid of their favors to go certain places or their ability to get on some list or to go places after hours or to get certain heads up on certain things all these things kind of play into it or just the clout of knowing that person personally that kind of plays into it as well you see some of the people in the studio um doing um some body weight training it looks like a certain type of person loves the idea of all this um carefully sorting screws all day as part of their kind of making uh, of unified art making organism there's a recent reddit thread called how can i work for tom Sachs?" one rep one response says just show up at the front of the studio like fight club um says second former um a former studio assistant it was a really desirable place to be and privileged in some ways owen zoit dropped out of nyu in 2021 to join the studio he had been applying to work there every year since he was 15 routed it's really really lovely to feel like you're part of something and working in a very tight knitly group it can be a really fast paced environment and achieve some really fantastic goals most so most of the foremost talking players we spoke to asked for anonymity. Many signed non-disclosure agreements, and others said they feared retaliation. <laughs> little Tom Sachs is going to come after you, and he's going to be running after you down the street in these little Mars yards, you know, trying to kick you with these little legs. Um, when you start working at Tom Sachs Studio, you're given manuals. Um, you're they're substantially more detailed than ten bullets. In one, after the suggestion of how to properly approach Tom Sachs on his lunch, there's advice: avoid things that make Tom mad. Which which begins with um method <laughs> meted verse tom will sometimes scream sometimes will sometimes broad um through dire life may seem happiness lies in reading tom's moods tax spokesman says his manual was a joke recent player says he took it seriously i don't mind this because he's basically giving you a heads up and saying to you i'm a cunt he's doing it in poetry form but he is telling you he's letting you know hey i'm a piece of shit that's what he's letting you know and i think and i actually appreciate that 
I think in many places that I've been at, the people have tried to pretend like they're cool, pretend like they're one of the boys or they're one of the crew, but they're actually tyrants. So I prefer it if you're a tyrant and you be up front and you know you kill your, my family in front of me as opposed to bring me into your household and make it seem like it's sweet and then you kill them all in their sleep. Please do it when I'm awake. Um, it's impossible to read these moods on all time or to follow any of his exacting assistants precisely, says former employees, a mix of studio assistants, managers and specialists, all of whom worked for Sash at various points of his past 15 years. And when someone in inevitably messed up, if, for instance, they put a good light bulb in the bad light bulb drawer, the consequences were often far worse than giving a $2 to Leatherface. Multiple studio members recall Sash calling them autistic. <laughs> Or retarded or bitch in other names. <laughs> if you put the good light bulbs in the bad light bulb drawer, you got called redacted, autistic, or a bitch. That is a little bit extreme, right? Okay. <laughs> anyway, Sash Studio Assistant, Sash Studio denies this, saying that such behaviors is not in line with the values of the studio. He also denied almost all the allegations leveled at him in this story. Of course, deny, deny, deny. That's the first rule of journalism debunking. Basically, if a light bulb went out in the middle of the night and you didn't change it, it's second. Uh, it got you got in you you were getting your ass biblically reamed out says a third former studio assistant according to several former studio assistants you were at risk of having things thrown if not at you then direction of where you were working to be fair that's something that's not on if anyone throws in something at me at work i don't care where i'm working we have to throw hands i mean step outside or i'm gonna throw something back which is okay if if you work somewhere and your manager has to throw something at you but you can also throw something back at them. I think that's a fair exchange. Just don't fire me because I threw something back at you. That's not fair. Do you know what I mean? I know it's your company and stuff, but let's be fair. If you can throw a stapler at me, I can throw this chair back at you. Like, you know, L let's go tete a tete. I saw him throw a sheet of steel across the room. How do you throw a sheet of steel at someone? Jesus Christ. Um, because someone had left it in the wrong place and it almost and it almost hit a tank of welding gas. Oh, it could have blew up. Every yeah, imagine that. Um, and then somebody comes in with their weed man and the whole place blows up that would be hilarious says a former fabricator and when i went out to the studio manager to say hey he threw something towards me <laughs> her response was well at least he didn't throw it at you he used to throw stuff at people oh god says another former studio assistant he threw wood across the floor one time he ripped the alarm system off the wall and threw it and threw the clipboard a lot of clipboards and a ladder <laughs> this sounds like gordon ramsay in an art studio to be fair there were so many rules to keep track of and they came from all over the place the manual the manager sacks himself it was easy to get tripped up make sex dog um make sex dogs his first trice daily meal the rabbit sweet potato and junior spinach cranberry powder and aloe vera juice and coconut oil you have to make his dog that meal hold on you have to make dog make tom sack's dog his thrice daily meal of rabbit sweet potato um julie need um spinach cranberry powder aloe vera juice and coconut oil this doggy's better than me fucking hell bring sex to snacks Bring sex snacks like Iberico ham if he's signing autograph artwork. Sorry, all his pens must be new and not new new. The ink should be already be flowing. <laughs> you have to uncap his pens and let the ink flow a little bit, like you're stubbing out a crink pen or something. Oh my god! Group lunches are to be prepared by fast. Sorry, by a food system manager and forks to be dropped in the unison at the end of the meal. Once I was on the phone arranging Tom and Sarah's travel, says the former studio manager they mainly fly first class and if their seats doesn't go full bed don't bother coming back in this was repeated to me <laughs> i'm not gonna lie tom says sounds like a fucking legend i'm so gonna lie he sounds like a fucking legend you had to book seats for him that went full bed if they didn't go full bed so if they went like a you know they just kind of peated back a little bit but not all the way then you you were you were gonna get fired if if you booked them a, a first class seat that didn't have like a champagne button, you get fired. Oh my God. While she was on the phone, the door buzzed and she thoughtlessly let the person in. This was a problem. She says because staff weren't supposed to let unidentified guests enter. I got back upstairs and Tom sprang at me. He was inches from my face. I could feel the heat from his body. He screams, why didn't you answer the door? What's wrong with you? Many workers grew desperate to please, doing their best to find him... Um, italicized apples what italicized apples which several former employees say were his description of fuji apples that were slanted oh my god 
Those who succeeded were occasionally rewarded. Um, what, sloppy toppy? According to multiple studio members, Saks dispensed birthday gifts and different values to demonstrate the one standing. The first gift is always a knife and after it, it's based off your value, says a full, former studio assistant. If you were favoured, you could get Prada shoes. If you are not, you might get re-gifted something from a free pile. <laughs> Oh, he sounds like a legend. Around around people he deemed important, several summer uh, members say he sometimes made a point to act more reserved. But in restful settings like um, gallery installations, he let his guard down, according to some who worked with him in his institution. She saw him yell at studio members and his workers are just like, yes, chef, you are the whole, you, you, you see this hollow look in some of their eyes. You're like, this is for art. Yeah, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but you can read it if you want to check out yourself here. It's called, uh, Tor, what's it called? Uh, Tom Sachs Promised a Funk Cult. Personally, for me, I'm a big fan of his and his art and stuff. So clearly, I'm a little bit, you know, I, I'm a little bit somewhat conflicted in this. But overall, I don't think it's that big of an issue. I think I've worked in worse sounding places. I just think for whatever reason, maybe in the art world, there is this idea that it's this fun, magical place when it clearly isn't. And I guess he runs a really tight ship. That's basically the fact of the matter. He clearly runs a really tight ship. He has very exacting standards. But one thing I have to give him credit for, and I say this again because I meet a lot of cunts that pretend they're nice people, at least he's up front. At least he lets it be known very clearly. Like even, you know, maybe because I'm just reading it from the outside and I was just looking at it from an art practice side of things. I didn't really kind of look deeply into it. I never even associated with it with a cult. But now they're saying what they're saying. And if you look at the pictures and how he tries to go on, it kind of is a bit like a cult. But at least he's very clear about what you're getting into. There is no kind of surprises. You can just judge from the videos, from how they conduct themselves on social media, from just the interviews that he gives and whatnot, um, from the people that work there in general general how they how they act on social you can kind of get a, an idea of what the kind of place is like and what he's like as a person so there really should be no surprises when you do enter the house um or the stu studio tom Sachs personally for me i don't think it should be that much of a surprise but i just think we live in a world where people you know are just they don't know what high standards look like um you know especially in their own work they might be procrastinators and whatnot um they might just you know not have the most high or so exacting standards when it comes to their art they might just see it as a creative endeavor and not something that you can kind of judge as quote-unquote work so when you work for somebody that clearly does treat you like work tries to run a some more a semi-factory cult type of thing it does maybe it does it is maybe hard to get your head wrapped around it but i don't think it's that big of a deal personally for me but hey what do i know hey what do i know